Hey everyone, welcome to React course. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn React really from scratch. If you think you have at least 6 months of experience in HTML and JavaScript, then this course is for you. We're gonna learn really from the beginning. So, before we're getting late, let's get started and quickly set up the environment for React. In this lesson, we'll set up the environment for React. So, we're gonna need editor to write the React code. There are three code editors are there, including Visual Studio Code Editor, Sublime Text, Atom, and so on. Out of this, my favorite is VS Code Editor that you can download for code.visualstudio.com. But why this editor? VS Code Editor is very simple, lightweight, and powerful developer tool. VS Code offers extensions that are used to extend the functionality of the developer tool and rapidly develop the code. So, go ahead and download it. Once you've done that, head on to the node.js.org and just download the node.js. We are using Node.js to install third-party libraries and also used to set up the modern development server. We're gonna use this to set up React project as well. And also in later section, we're gonna learn what is Node and how to use it. So let's first set up the React project. So let's create a new folder. I will choose my desktop. So I'm going to right click here and say new folder and name this folder React. Now when you've done that, open this folder in VS Code. So I'm going to open VS Code editor. Now let's open the react empty folder here. So I will select the file and say open folder. I'm going to select the desktop. Just select my react folder, right? So you can see the VS Code editor open the react folder in the explorer tab, right? Now just install few extensions that are help you to rapidly develop your code. So I will open this extension and here search for react and just install this extension. So this extension provide you JavaScript, react, Redux, and ES6 snippet with the Babel plugin feature. Just install it. And just after that, just install the full React and React Native extension. This extension provides different snippet. Like if you want to import the React module, then you just need to say IMR. This will import the React module in your file. Or if you wanted to import the React as well as the component, you just need to type IMRC. So this will import the React module as well as the component, right? Just after that, search for Prettier and install this extension in VS Code. Using this extension, we will format the JavaScript, React, and the CSS code automatically when we save the changes, right? When you install this extension, click on this setting icon and just open the setting. And here, you just need to search for editor.format on save. Just change this setting to true, right? So whenever you make any changes in your file, Prettier automatically format your code and save your lot of time, right? And just after that, just search for the live server and just install this extension to launch a development local server with the live reload features of static and dynamic pages. Now the setup is ready. In the next lesson, we will get started with the React course. In this lesson, we are going to understand history of React and what is React. So we will first understand history of React. React was created by Jordan Walke. I hope I have pronounced this name properly. He is a software engineer at Facebook. React was first developed on Facebook newsfeed in 2011 and later on for Instagram.com in 2012. Jordan was influenced by XHP, an HTML component framework for PHP. XHP allowed creating composite components. They introduced a syntax later in the React. In 2011, Jordan created FaxJS. FaxJS is an earlier prototype of React. In 2011, Facebook ads became hard to manage. Jordan worked on the prototype and created React. And finally, in 2013, React get open sourced. On this time, the popularity of React start begins. So many companies started adopting React just like Netflix, the biggest company for paid video streaming services. Facebook Facebook was the place where React was created and it is actively used on Facebook website, Instagram and on WhatsApp. We have another big example, Yahoo. Yahoo is a mail client in React. So Yahoo is also using a React for their mail service. Not only a few companies are using React, but there are many companies who are using React and also thousands of interested. Now you have a better understanding of React history, so we will take a look at what is React. 
Before we start coding in the React application, we need to define what is React. In simple words, React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. It is a UI component library, a React component created with React using JavaScript. This approach is called creating composable UIs. A component is a heart of React application. A component is a self-contained module that renders some output. Components are composable. A component might include one or more components in its output. A component in React is a self-contained functional block. Let's say you have a component date picker. This date picker component have a visual representation and a logic to pick a date which you have select. This type of component have both a visual representation and dynamic logic. The example is not limited for the date picker component, but you can also relate to the email input text box or an address or zip code component. But why we need for component? Component build off a concept of Ajax request, where you can call a server directly from a client side. This concept allowing components to be dynamically updated without the need for a page refresh. Components each have their own interfaces that can be make calls to the server and update their interfaces. Because components are independent, one component can refresh without affecting other components or UI as a whole. To maximize functionality and performance of newsfeed, Facebook used React. React was something called Virtual Dome. We will understand what is Virtual Dome in the next lesson. So we will just take an example to understand component. For example, if you have a form which might consist of a different interface element like input fields and buttons. Each element in the form can be returned as a React component. In this approach, form is a higher level component of React. Using this approach can specify different functionality to different input fields. So in this approach, the form is a root component of your application. Right? I think this is enough for today. Otherwise, this will be overwhelming for you. In the next lesson, we will understand more concept behind the React component and understand what is Virtual Dome. In this lesson, we are going to understand what is Virtual Dome. In the modern web development, Virtual Dome is crucial to understand. In modern JavaScript, Dome stands for Document Object Model. It is mainly used to create a nodes using JavaScript. Nowadays, DOM is a heart of modern interactive web. But using a simple DOM is a lot slower than the JavaScript operation. And the fact, most JavaScript frameworks updated DOM much more than they have to. Let's say, if you have a list of fruits and you choose your favorite fruit from the list, the JavaScript framework would rebuild the entire list. We only need to rebuild the selected item, but not the remaining. This extra work is adequate for a smaller application. Using list is not a big deal in the browser, but modern websites use huge amount of DOM manipulation. So this approach definitely slow down your web application. To address this problem, we have something called virtual DOM. In every JavaScript DOM, there is a corresponding virtual DOM which virtually represents a JavaScript DOM. Virtual DOM is object identical to the JavaScript object. In simple words, if I want to describe Virtual DOM, then I would say Virtual DOM is simply a representation of a JavaScript DOM object, like a lightweight copy. Virtual DOM object has the same power and has properties and methods like DOM object. But Virtual DOM can't decide what's on the screen. Virtual Dome is just like a blueprint where you can decide to move your bedroom just beside the hall, but not actually move it, because it is just a blueprint. Manipulating a dome is very slow. On the other hand, manipulating a virtual dome is much faster than the actual dome object. Now let's see how virtual dome works. Let's say if you have a few dome elements, this is a pure JavaScript dome elements. On the other hand, you have virtual dome representing the same DOM elements. When you make any changes in the React component, every single virtual DOM gets updated. 
It sounds slightly insignificant, but virtual DOM can update so quickly than the actual DOM. Once the virtual DOM has updated, then the React compare the virtual DOM with a virtual DOM snapshot that was taken right before the update. By comparing the new virtual DOM with a pre-updated version, React figure out exactly which virtual DOM objects have changed. This process is called diffing. Right? At any given time, React maintains two virtual DOM, one with the updated state virtual DOM and other with the previous state virtual DOM. Once React knows which virtual DOM object have changed, then the React updates those objects and only those objects on the real DOM. This concept makes a big difference. React can update only the necessary part of the DOM, right? Let's see the step-by-step -step process. The first, the entire virtual DOM gets updated. Then the virtual DOM get compared to what it looked like before you updated it. React figure out which object have changed. The changed object and the changed object only get updated on the real DOM. Change on the real DOM cause the screen to change. This process is known as reconciliation. That's it. I hope you understand what is virtual DOM. In the next lesson, we will move forward. In this lesson, we are going to understand what is React component. In the previous lectures, we had seen component is a heart of React. So before using React, we need to clear out concept behind the component. So what is component? You can think component as a small features that makes up a piece of a user interface. The difference component has different features. Every component have their own methods, properties, and their own APIs. The reason behind the component use in the React is to provide reusability of components. Every component is independent and might interact with each component independently. Let's say you have a block. We will call this block as app. This app has a navigation menu, trending post, recent post, and profile section. Each of these represent a component. So here, navigation menu is a separate component. Trending post and recent post are also separate components and as well as the profile section. Each component has their own visual representation and their logic. So each component is a piece of UI. You can build this component in isolation and put them together to build complex UI. Components are based on component-based architecture. Not to be confused with web components. It is just the most recent implementation of component-based architecture. The benefit of using component-based architecture is you can extend, replace, rescue, and encapsulate components. This architecture generally tends to be is there to rescue, maintain, and extend the monolithic UI. Now, let's see benefit of using React. Nowadays, you can see a competitor of React is Backbone and Angular. Each new generation of JavaScript framework has brought something new to the table. React isn't unique in this. What is new is React challenge some more core concept used by the most popular front-end frameworks. Following is the highlight of some React benefits. First is fast UIs. When you are working with the React application, React will provide outstanding performance. Thanks for the virtual DOM and smart reconciliation algorithm. Second benefit of using React is easy to learn and easy to use. While we are going to learn React, you will notice React is not a complex language that takes almost a life to learn a whole concept. Everyone who comes from the JavaScript background can understand and start using React in few days. Then we have another benefit is reusable components. Each component has its own logic and controls, its own rendering and can be rescued wherever you need them. Code rescue helps makes your apps easier to develop and easier to maintain, then also help you implement a consistent look and feel across the whole project. Then we have another benefit which is JSX. This syntax is a nice and healthy blend of JavaScript and HTML. It is used specifically in React.js. This specifies a whole process of writing components 
for the website and the HTML aspect allow your developer to render function without concatenating strings. Don't worry, we will understand what is JSX in the future lectures. Now we have another benefit which is efficient data binding. React allow one-way data binding which exactly means that anyone can track all the changes made to any segment of the data. So this signifies the clarity and simplicity of this platform. And you can also add some additional benefit of React like this. So React makes JavaScript code easier. Then the React is extremely efficient. Excellent cross-browser support. Handle dependencies. Template designing mode easy. Provides amazing developer tools. UI focused design and easy to adopt. Combining all these things, React is an application makes you more comfortable and save a lot of time to build a web application, right? That's it. I hope you understand what is component and what is the benefit of using the React. In the next lecture, we will move forward. In this lesson, we are going to understand React declarative over imperative style. In the previous lesson, we had learned the benefit of React. In that topic, we learned simplicity benefit. But what makes React simple than the other frameworks? So in this lesson, we will briefly understand what is the difference between declarative or imperative style and understand simplicity of React. These two major concepts need to be clear before you dive into React application. So we will understand what is declarative or imperative style. Declarative style, it means developer write how it should be, not how to do. On the other hand, imperative style, developer write how to do. In the imperative style, developer define a task step by step. Now the better choice to use in your code is a declarative style because simplicity is always better. Simplicity is closely related to the KISS principle. KISS stands for keep it simple stupid. The gist is that simple system works better. But why declarative style a better choice? The benefit is that declarative style makes your code simple, reduce complexity and makes your code easier to read and understand. Now let's take a look at small difference between declarative and imperative style. This example illustrates the difference between declarative and imperative style. For example, let's say you have an array and you want to double the array element and store in the new array. So you will just create a simple array and a blank array here. In this situation, you can use for loop to iterate over an array and multiply by 2 and store in the new array, like this. Right? So this for loop will iterate each array element and multiply by 2 and store in the new array element on i index. So if I just say console.log and print this array on the console, then the result would look like this. Right? This program illustrates imperative programming. And it works. Due to the complexity of the code, it is too difficult to understand what is the end result is supposed to be when you have too many imperative statements. Fortunately, you can rewrite the code using declarative style. We are going to get the same outcome using the map method. A map method creates a new array with the result of calling a function for every array element. And map method calls the provided function once for each element in an array in order, right? So I will just get the same outcome using this code. So I will just use map function here and specify function as an argument, right? And multiply each array element by two. When you execute this declarative statement, you will get the same outcome. The double array is same as in the previous example. Now you tell me which code is easier to read and understand. In my humble opinion, the declarative style is more readable and easy to understand, right? Till now, you had seen only JavaScript code, but what about React? React take the same declarative approach when you compose UIs. In React, to create a component, we are using declarative style. Now, I hope you understand what is the difference between declarative and imperative style. Now, we will move forward to the next topic and understand React abstraction. React has a powerful abstraction of document model. React hide underlying interfaces and provide a synthetic method and properties. 
For example, when you create onclick event in React, the event handler will receive not a native browser specific event object that is a wrapper around a native event object. You can expect the same behavior from the synthetic object. React also has a set of synthetic event for touch events, which are great for building web apps for mobile devices. To describe everything about React in single lesson is not possible for anyone. I hope you understand what is the difference between declarative and imperative style and the basic understanding of React abstraction. In this lesson, we are going to understand what is Babel. We already learn modern JavaScript into JavaScript course and we know that JavaScript is an interpreted language. The browser interprets the code as text, so there is no need to compile the JavaScript code. However, not all browsers support ECMAScript 6 and 7 syntax and no browser support JavaScript XML syntax. Since we are going to use ECMAScript 6 and later we need to convert this fancy source code into something that browser can interpret. This process is known as transpiling and it is what Babel is designed to do. Babel is a tool basically used to convert ECMAScript 6 syntax into ECMAScript 5. It is also grew to support transpiling JavaScript XML syntax into pure React. There are many ways to work with Babel. You can include Babel CDN in the HTML file using script tag or you can use node package manager to install Babel package in your application. Now we are using Babel tool to describe how Babel work. So we are going to open the Babel website and using the tool we will see how Babel convert ECMAScript 6 syntax into ECMAScript 5. So let's take an example and understand how Babel convert ES6 and letter syntax into ES5. So I will just go to the Babel website. So I will just type Babel here and just say enter. Click on the babel.js.io website and from this website I will just try this out from here. Right? Now here I will write some ECMAScript 6 code and declare a function with two arguments and return addition of that arguments. Right? So I will just say here let add is equal to and here I will just specify arrow function. In the arrow function we are specifying default arguments. So I will just say a is equal to 5 comma b is equal to 4 and just after that specify my arrow here and in the body of this function I will just say return a plus b right. So I will just return addition of a and b. While you are typing this code, Babel tool will convert this code into ECMAScript 6 syntax. Now you can easily figure out what is the difference between ES6 and ES5. Babel tool will convert ES6 syntax into ES5, right? React use Babel for JavaScript and JSX. Now you know the basic of Babel. Now we are going to understand few disadvantages of React. Of course, every framework has its own drawbacks and React is one of them. Some of the differences like declarative versus imperative are highly subjective. So they can be both pros and cons. So I will just list out few disadvantages of React. So the first disadvantages of React is React isn't as mature as other frameworks. React core API is still changing. The best practices for React as well as the ecosystem of components, plugins and add-ons are still developing. The second disadvantage of React is React uses a somewhat new approach to web development and JSX and Flux often used with React as a data library and can be intimidating to beginners. There is a lack of best practices, good books, courses and resources available for mastering in React. The third disadvantage of React is React only has a one-way binding. Although one-way binding is better for complex apps and remove a lot of complexity, some developers who got used to a two-way binding will find themselves writing a bit more code. I will explain how React one-way binding works compared to the Angular two-way binding in future lectures. The fourth disadvantage of React is 
developer need to pair it with a library like Redux and React Router to achieve functionality comparable to Angular and Ember. This can also be an advantage if you need a minimalistic UI library to integrate with your existing stack. Fifth disadvantage is lots of developers dislike JSX React documentation. Manuals are difficult to newcomers understanding, right? So these are few disadvantages of React. Now let's see how React fit to your web application. React is a backend agnostic for the purpose of frontend development. In other words, you don't have to rely on Node.js backend or mean MongoDB Express React.js and Node.js to use React. It's fine to use React with any other backend technology like Java, Ruby, Go, or Python. After all, React is a UI library. You can integrate it with any backend and any frontend data library like Backbone, Angular, and so on. React works nicely with other frontend technology but isn't mostly used as part of single page architecture because SPA seems to be most ad advantageous and popular approach to binding web apps. In the next lecture, we are going to understand what is single page application. In this lecture, we are going to understand what is a single page application. React uses single page application architecture. This architecture is also known as thick land because the browser being a client holds more logic and performs functions such as rendering of HTML, validation, UI changes, and so on. In this lesson, we will understand how single page application work in React. Before the first single page application framework appeared, the landscape was dominated by multiple page application, built in static HTML and server side technologies like PHP, ASP, Java, Ruby, and Python. Multiple page application work by making multiple requests between the client and server. As websites have grown in complexity, so have the demands they make on server. The introduction of Ajax, which allows web page to be updated without reloading, partly elevate this issue. Today, many frameworks provide single page application architecture. If you decided to building a single page application best suit your project, there is still the small matter of selecting single page application framework. I will list out three important framework which you can use to build single page application. So the first framework which you can use to build single page application is React.js. Then we have Angular and the third is Vue.js. These three frameworks are comfortable working with single page application. So let's take an example and understand how single page application work. So, Let's say you are a user using single page application. The first thing you would do is request a new URL, right? So this is your browser window and this is a server. So when you request a new URL, the browser send URL request to the server right here, right? Just after that, the server respond to the request with static asset such as HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This request has only a skeleton of web page. When this step will be happening, you might see loading or spinning animation. Just after that, the static asset include the JavaScript code for single page application. When the JavaScript code loaded, this additional code makes an Ajax request for data. Just after that, the data come back with the JSON, XML or any other format. Once you have a data received from the server, the HTML skeleton render the missing data on the web page. When the browser rendering is finished, the single page application will replace the loading message or an animation and you can see your actual web page on the browser. Now you can work on this web page. Now when you have your web page, you might perform a data request to the server. If you are request for any data from the server, just like clicking on the submit button, to submit your data or to request any information by clicking on the button. Now triggering a new request from a single page application to the server will cycle URL request to the server and get the response from the server and render HTML on the browser. Single page application will not reload entire page. 
Using single page application, when you request for a data, the page will render the specific section which you had requested. You will get your render data in the specific HTML element. Server will not reload the entire application to render this data in the web page. This is very crucial when you are working with the huge website. This architecture helps us to improve performance of the website. So this is what single page application architecture. Now let's take few pros and cons of single page application. When you are using single page application, pages load faster when a user navigate within an application which requests in a snappier user experience after the initial load. Richer application can be built with single page applications. It takes more time to initialize the application as it has to be downloaded to the user device. But this can be improved by server side rendering. Single page application require the user to have JavaScript turned on. Single page application framework can be used to develop mobile application that facilitate code reusability down to the level of UI element. Single page application can be hard to track, especially when triggering third party modules and plugins. Single page application are newer and you need to familiar with the specific frameworks and tools like npm, webpack, system.js and go. So these are few pros and cons of using single page application. In the next lecture, we are going to understand what is ECMAScript 6 module. So in this lecture, we are going to understand what is ECMAScript 6 modules. The first question comes in your mind is what is module? A JavaScript module is a piece of reusable code that can easily be incorporated into other JavaScript files. Until recently, the only way to work with modular JavaScript was to incorporate a library that could be handled importing and exporting modules. Now with ES6, JavaScript itself support modules. JavaScript modules are stored in separate files. One file per module. There are two options when creating and exporting a module. You can export multiple JavaScript object from a single module or one JavaScript object per module. Everything inside an ECMAScript 6 module is private by default and runs in the strict mode. Public variables, functions and classes are exposed using export keyword. Now let's take an example and understand how to create modules using ECMAScript 6. So we have two files here. First is magic.js and second is main.js. In magic.js file, I will just create two functions. The first function is using function keyword and the second is using the arrow function. We will specify export keyword to both function to export this function from the module. We will export this both function using export keyword, right? So I will just create my first function here. So I will just say export function and specify name sum and specify two arguments a comma b. And just after that here I will call multiplication function. So I will just say here multi and in the parenthesis I will say a comma b. I will just specify the arguments here. Just after that I will say console.log and print the addition of a and b here. So I will just say a plus b right. So this is my first function. Now I just wanted to create my second function using arrow function, right? So I will just say here export let multi is equal to and in the parenthesis I will specify two arguments just specify arrow here and in the body of this function I will say console.log and specify multiplication with two arguments. So I will just say a multiply by b, right? Now you can export this function using a single statement as well. So I will just remove this export keyword and just say here export and in the curly braces you can export this function on single line as well. So I will just say sum comma multi. So this statement will export both functions at the same time, right? Now this is our module. In this module, we had exported two functions. Now here we are going to use this code in other JavaScript file. 
as you know module provide us reusability of the code so i will just use this function in the other javascript file so let's see how you can access these functions in the other javascript file so we have a import keyword to import this function in the other javascript file but before you import this function in other javascript file make sure you specify type attribute to the script tag script which use module must be loaded by setting a type module attribute in the script tag don't forget to specify this attribute before you're using module in the javascript file otherwise you will get an error message after you specify your attribute to the script tag, you can use module in the main.js file. To import this function in the main.js file, you can use import keyword. So I will just say import. To import both function, I will say curly braces here and specify some comma multi. So this is my two functions. And I wanted to import these functions from a specific file. So I will just specify from here and in the double quote, I will specify module file name. Now here, I just wanted to specify where from I want to import this function. So I will just specify name of my module file in the single or double quote. Keep in mind, we had created both this file on the same location. If you create the module file in the folder, then don't forget to specify the absolute file name in the double quote. So we had created this file on the same location. So I will just say dot here, specify forward slash and specify name of my file with extension so i will just say magic.js right and specify semicolon at the end now you can use these functions in the main.js file to use this function just specify your function name so we know that the name of my function is sum and then specify value so the first argument will be four the second is five right so when you execute this file, you will get multiplication and the addition of two numbers because we had called multiplication function in the sum function, right? You are free to import multiple modules in the same file. So basically, modules are used to create reusable code. Now you can use these modules anywhere in the JavaScript code. You can use namespace as well to import all public items like this. So I will just remove this curly braces from here and just say asterisk as more so now you can use this namespace to call any properties and functions from the module so i'll just say mode dot sum and specify four and five here right so you can access this sum function using the namespace you can call the multi functions as well so i will just say mode multi 5 comma 6 and just execute this statement right so it is very important to use module when you are using react if you are using node.js which we'll talk about after a few lectures is use different keywords to import and export modules i will talk about what is node.js in future lectures right that's it i hope you understand why we need to use modules in the javascript and how to use it in this lecture, we will understand what is React element. So before we start understanding React element, let's talk about document object model first. So let's overview how document object model work. HTML is a simple set of instructions that the browser follows when constructing the document object model or DOM. The element that makes up an HTML document become DOM elements when the browser loads HTML and render the user interface so basically we are using html to construct document object model elements so this is our simple heading tag creating a simple heading level element in html is equal to the dom statement like this using the dom api you can create the same dom elements which you can create using html updating or changing render dom elements in the javascript is relatively easy however the process of inserting new elements is painfully slow. Managing DOM elements with JavaScript efficiently can become very complicated and time consuming. The solution for this is React. React is a library that is designed to update the browser DOM for us. With React, we do not interact with the DOM API directly. Instead, we interact with the virtual DOM. 
are a set of instructions that React will use to construct the UI and interact with the browser. The virtual DOM is made up of React elements, which conceptually seem similar to the HTML elements, but are actually JavaScript objects. Now, you know that how browser can understand HTML and use DOM to create user interface. Now, let's talk about React element. The browser DOM is made up of DOM elements. Similarly, the React DOM is made up of React elements. DOM elements and React elements may look the same, but they are actually quite different. A React element is a description of what the actual DOM element should look like. In simple words, React element are the instructions for how the browser DOM should be created. We can create a React component to represent an h1 heading tag using react.createElement method. So using this method, you can create a React element. The first argument defines the type of element that we wish to create, like h1, span, or paragraph. You can also define components. The second argument represents the element's properties. We did not specify any property to the h1 heading tag right now. We will understand how to specify React element property in the next lecture. The third argument represents the element's children or in our HTML text. So the React element is just a JavaScript literal that tells React how to construct the DOM element. Now let's talk about React DOM. React DOM contains the tools necessary to render React element in the browser. React DOM is where we will find the render method. Now when you have your element in the DOM, we need to append this element in the DOM tree. So the React use a render method to render this DOM element. Now let's see how this method look like. So this is our simple React DOM render method. In the first argument of this render method, we will specify element which we wanted to render on the browser. And the second argument is a container element where you want to append your child element. So the second argument is your parent node and the first argument is your child node, right? Now let's put the previously created h1 heading tag in the render method and let's see how it should look like. So to create a react element, we are using react object with create element method. So now we will create react element. So I will just say let h1 is equal to react dot create element and in the parenthesis the first argument is our tag so i will just say h1 here we wanted to create h1 heading tag so i will just say h1 here right the second argument represent the elements properties and just after that i will specify some text to the h1 heading tag now i just wanted to render this react element in the dom so i will just say react dom dot render I will call the render method and specify our element first. So on the first argument, I will say h1. So this is my react element and specify comma. And in the second argument, I will specify the parent node where I wanted to insert my element. I wanted to insert my element in the division tag. So I will just say here document dot get element by ID and specify ID of the div element, right? So when you execute this, the output should look like this, right? So you have your div element inside h1 heading tag. In the next lecture, we will create first React program. In this lesson, we are going to create our first React application. We will just print hello world on the browser window using React. You can create a React application using CLI, but just for now, we will understand how to create React using CDN. When you know the concept of React and understand its methods and properties, then we will create React application using CLI. And just before that, we will understand the Node Package Manager, right? So we will understand the advanced topic of React one by one. But just for now, let's create React application using CDN. So first, we need HTML file. So I will just quickly create index.html file in Visual Code Editor. So I will just click on this small icon and create a simple index.html file and just create a simple snippet of HTML5, right? Now I will just change the title of my HTML document and say React. 
In order to work with React in the browser, you need to include two libraries, React and React Dome. React is the library for creating views and React Dome is a library used to actually render the UI in the browser. React and React Dome were split into two packages from version 0.14. We will also need an HTML element that React Dome will use to render the UI. So we will just create a division tag with id container in the body section of the HTML file, right? To include React and React Dome library, we will just open the browser and just say React CDN. I will just click on the first website and here you will find two libraries. The first CDN used for development purpose and the second CDN used for production purpose. So we are using development purpose. So I will just use development CDN. So I will just copy the CDN and paste it just before the closing body tag. Now you can use React in your document. The first thing you need to do is you need to create a script tag to write a pure React code or a JavaScript code. So I will just create a script tag here. Make sure you specify the script tag just after the React package is loaded. Now here we will create a first React element. We understand enough about React element in the previous lecture. So we will just implement the code to create React element and store this element in the DOM. So I will first create an element and store in the variable. So I will just say let h1 is equal to react dot. I will just call the create element method. Now on the first argument, I will just specify the HTML tag name, which I wanted to create. So I will just say h1 here, comma. And I also wanted to specify some properties to the HTML heading. So I will just say curly braces here. And in this curly braces, I will specify multiple properties. So the first property I will specify is ID and specify ID heading, right? Just specify comma here and specify my second property. The second property is style. Now to apply multiple style, we need to specify curly braces here and you can specify multiple style in this curly braces, right? So I will just specify only one style to this element. So I will just say color light blue, right? And just after that, in the third argument, I will just specify text for my heading tag. So I will just say hello react. Now you have your react element. You need to render this element using react dome dot render method, right? So I will just say react dome dot render. And in this method, I will specify two arguments. So I will just say h1 here. So I will just specify my previously created element, which is my h1 tag and just specify comma here and just say document dot get element by ID and just select the container division tag using the ID, right? So just execute this statement. I will just execute this HTML file in the browser and then you will see your react element on the document. Right? Now let's see how to create a child elements. React render child elements using property children. In the previous example, we render a text element as a child of the h1 element. And thus the property children was set to hello react. We could render other react elements as children too, creating a tree of elements. Now let's see if you wanted to create an order list you will just put your tag and in this your tag, you will put some li tag to create a list. So I will just create a fruit list of react elements. You can do the same thing with react element also. React element are composed into a single element using nesting. Let's understand how to nesting element in react. So I will just say here let ul. So I will just create a variable. Just specify equal to sign and say react dot create element and just create my first ul tag here. So I will just say ul comma null. So here I don't want to specify any property to the ul tag. So I will just specify null here and specify comma here. 
Now here, I just wanted to nest my li tag, react.createElement and create your li tag here. So I will just say li, comma, null, comma, banana. So this is my text for my first li tag. Just after that, specify comma here and specify second li tag. You can do the same thing multiple times, right? You can add multiple li tag using the same method. So I will just add two li tag here. The second li tag I will just specify mango, right? Now here we have a ul tag with two nested li tags. Now we wanted to render this ul tag on the document, right? So I will just say react dom dot render and on the first argument I will say ul. So I'll just wanted to render the ul tag and just specify the container element. So I will just say document dot get element by id and before we specify my id i just wanted to create division tag in the body section so what i will do is i will just create a division tag with id ul underscore div right so now in this division tag we will put ul tag so i will just back to my render method and specify here id which is ul underscore div right so i just wanted to append this ul tag in this division tag right so when you execute this you will get your fruit list on the document so using the children property you can create nested elements well that is all for this lecture that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture in this lecture we will create react component in the previous lecture we had learned how to create react element and also learn nested elements now, when you have nested React element, you will stumble with the next React problem. When you create nested element, you will find there are lots of element you need to create. And what if you wanted to create the same element in other page? Then you will need to create the same code again. And as you know, repetition is not good in programming. To solve this problem, we have a React component class. Or you can just say React component. React component help us to rescue elements multiple times. Now, let's take an example to understand why we need to create a React component class. Suppose you have a React element paragraph. You need to use this paragraph in 10 different files or you can say 10 different projects. The way you can do that, you will put the same code in 10 different files. This method will increase the size of your application as well as it will reduce the performance of your application and repeat the code. To solve this problem, we have a React component class. Using the React component class, you can extend the same class over and over and use the same element in many projects. Interestingly, you can use extend keyword to extend a React component class and create your child and parent relation with the React component class. So your class would be child class extended from the parent React component class. The one mandatory thing you must implement for this new class is the render method. This method must return a single React element, which is created from another custom component class or an HTML tag. Both can have nested elements. Now, let's see if you wanted to create a React element of hello words. To create a React element, you need to write more code than using the React component class. Now, Let's see how to use a React component class to create two React elements. So here I have an index.html file. I already linked two packages, React and React Dome. In this file, we had created a division tag in the body section and specified ID container. Just after the React package has been loaded, we will create a script tag and put some pure React code. So here I will just create a pure React code and create an element. So I will just say let h1 is equal to and call the react.createElement method. So I will just say react.createElement and in the parenthesis I will create h1 heading level element, specify comma, specify null because I don't want to specify any property and then specify inner HTML text. So I will just say hello world here. Just after that I just wanted to create a react component class. You can take this code as a react component right so i will just say class my class you can specify any name to your class extends 
react dot component keep in mind when you creating your own component you need to extend the react component class right just after that here in this class the mandatory thing you need to do is to use render method this render method work like a return keyword used in the function but it just different from the return keyword this method return the element to the class so this render method will render the component in the ui right and we also use the return keyword to return the component to the render method right so i will just say render and in this method i will just say return react dot create element and in the parenthesis i will just specify division tag i will just create a division tag here and just specify null property to this division tag and add child elements so here i will just use my h1 react element here so i will just say h1 comma h1 comma h1 so here we wanted to create three h1 tags so i will just specify three h1 elements here right now i just wanted to render this react component in the react dome so i will just say react dome dot render and in this method or the first argument i will just create an element so i will just say react dot create element and in the parenthesis i will first specify my class so i will just say my class so this is my react component and specify comma here and specify null the null refers to the properties right just after that i just wanted to append this component in the division tag so i will just say document dot get element by id and in the parenthesis i will specify my id so i will just say container here right so when you execute this code you will get three react element on the document so the power of react is reusability it leads to faster development and fewer bugs components also have life cycle events states dome events and other features that let you make them interactive and self-contained in the next lecture we will work with the properties of the react element in this lecture we will understand what is jsx we are going to understand what is the benefit of using jsx jsx is crucial in react in my opinion it is very important thing to understand before working with react application in the previous lectures we had learned how to create react element and a component where the process of creating react element and component is really very messy when creating a nested element using create element method is very complicated to understand how the output should look like now let's look at the following example if you read this code you will find there are two elements that they are nested and have some properties so how readable is this compared to the standard HTML? Do you think this code is eloquent? Isn't it? The standard HTML is more comfortable comparing to this code. So to solve this problem, React introduced JSX. JSX is a JavaScript extension that provides synthetic sugar for functions calls and object constructions. It may look like a template engine or HTML, but it isn't. The benefit of using JSX is this. JSX make code more easier to read. Using JSX, you can modify your code easily if you are familiar with the standard HTML language. The most important benefit of using JSX is to write less code, which means they make fewer mistakes and they are less likely to develop repetitive stretch injuries. In a sense, JSX is a small language with an XML-like syntax, but it has changed the way people write UI components. Previously, developers write HTML and JS code for controllers and views in an MVC-like manner, jumping between various files that stemmed from the separation of concerns in the early days. This approach served the web well when it consisted of static HTML a little CSS and a tiny bit of JavaScript to make text blink. This is no longer the case today. We build highly interactive UIs and JS and HTML are tightly coupled to implement various pieces of functionalities. 
React fixed this broken separation of concern principle by bringing together the description of the UI and the JS logic. And with JSX, the code looks like HTML and it is easier to read and write. Now, let's understand how JSX works. JSX is compiled by various transformers into standard ECMAScript. You probably know that JavaScript is ECMAScript 2, but JSX isn't part of the specification and it doesn't have any semantics. So, as I said earlier, JSX is not a specification of ECMAScript 6. We are using Babel to compile the JSX into JavaScript. You can also call this process as transcompiling. So, let me first describe what is the meaning of transcompiling. Transcompiling is a type of compiler that takes the source code of the program written in the one programming language as its input and produces the equivalent source code in the another programming language. So here we are using JSX syntax and transcompile this syntax into ECMAScript. Let me show you the process. So first we will type JSX code on the document. The code written in JSX is transcompiled to the JavaScript code. And then the browser will execute this JavaScript code easily. Now you know the process of JSX. So we will take a small example to understand JSX. In the previous lectures, we had learned what is Babel and how to use it. So we are using the same Babel tool and create JSX code and transcompile it into JavaScript. So we will get the help from the Babel tool and this Babel tool will do the heavy lifting for us. This code will transfer the JSX into pure ECMAScript code. So I will just open the Babel tool and write some JSX code. So this JSX code will transfer into pure ECMAScript code. This JSX code look like a standard HTML but it is not. On the right side you will get your ECMAScript code. As you know React used the pure JavaScript code to build their component. So you can see we have a pure ECMAScript code on the right side. Using the Babel we will transcompile JSX code into pure React code. Now you tell me which code is more easier on the left hand side or on the right hand side. Of course on the left hand side because most of the developer familiar with the HTML syntax. Right? So using the Babel we will convert JSX into pure JavaScript code. Right? In the next lecture we will create react element using JSX. In this lecture we are going to understand how to create react element using JSX. In the previous lectures we had learned what is JSX and its benefits and how it's work. So in this lecture we will create a react element using JSX. Using JSX it is very easy to create react element just like the standard HTML syntax using which you can create react element. We are going to create fruit list. We will create a container division tag and put ul tag with the class fruits. In this ul tag we will create two li elements with the class item and specify fruit names. Right? So if you are using create element method to create this simple fruit list then the code should look like this. So here you have your division tag and in this tag this is your container and in this container tag you have your ul tag and two nested li tags right so if you read this code and just create an output in your mind then the result would be possibly correct because this code is very complicated to read and understand so let's see how to create nested element using jsx so here in this file we will create nested fruit list so using unordered list we are going to create list of fruits so, to use JSX in the React application, you need to include Babel library first. Using this library, you can transcompile JSX code into JavaScript. So, we will just include the Babel library. So, I will just open the browser and type Babel CDN. Click on the standalone Babel CDN website. So, I will just click here. Standalone build of Babel for use non-Node.js environment. Right? 
In the future lectures, we will understand how to create React application using Node.js and also understand how to use JSX using Node.js environment, right? So just for now, I will just copy the minified version of Babel library and paste it in the index.html file just before the React packages has been loaded. So this is our React packages. We need to include this file just before the React packages here. So I will just paste the script tag over here, right? Before using JSX, you need to specify type attribute to use Babel. So I will just specify type to the script tag and say text Babel. Keep in mind, specifying the text attribute will transcompile JSX into JavaScript. Otherwise, the script tag will not recognize the JSX code and you will get an error message. So don't forget to specify type attribute before using JSX, right? In index.html file, we have a container of division tag in the body section. Now, I will just create a nested fruit list using an order list, right? So I will just create hello world program first to understand JSX easily and then create nested elements. So I will first select the id container division tag and store in the variable. So I will say let container is equal to document dot get element by id. And say container here, right? So we have our division tag in the container variable. Just after that, I just wanted to print hello world on the document. So I will just say react dome dot render. I will use the render method to print UI. And just after that, on the first argument of render method, I will specify h1 heading tag. So I will just say h1 and just close this h1 tag. And here I will specify hello world. Right. Just after that, specify comma here to specify second argument and say container here. So this is my container division tag, right? So when you execute this, you will get hello world on the document. So this code is very simple if you compare this code with the create element method. The Babel library will transcompile this JSX statement into create element method and create h1 heading tag with the inner HTML text hello world, right? So let's understand how to create nested elements using JSX. So I will just get rid of this h1 heading tag. And here I will just create ul tag and specify class fruits. And just close this ul tag. In this ul tag, I will just create two li tags. I will first say li class item and specify some demo text. So I will say mango here, right? And just after that, create my second li tag. So I will just copy this li tag and paste it here because I wanted to use the same class name. So I will just copy and paste it here and say banana, right? So I will just edit the name and say banana. I will just enter my second fruit name, right? So I just wanted to append this ul tag in the container, right? So when you execute this, you will get nested elements on the document. So this is very easy and very simple to read and understand. It is very simple to create nested elements using JSX, right? In the next lecture, we will work with the React component using JSX. In this lecture, we will understand how to create component using JSX. In the previous lectures, we had learned how to create a React element using JSX. So the first thing we need to create a component class. In this component class, we will create React element. We already learned how to create React element using create element method. But now I will show you how to use JSX to create a component, right? So when working with the React component, the syntax of JSX is same as used in the previous lectures. But the only difference is that the component class must start with the capital letter. So let's consider the following example and understand how to create React component using JSX. Suppose if you wanted to create the fruit list in 10 different projects, then you wanted to use the same code again and again in different files. 
To solve this problem, we have a React component class. You can use this class anywhere and create the same component. We know that the component class help us to create reusable component. Now, let's create a fruit list using component class. In the previous lecture, we had just created this simple nested component using the JSX. And now, we will create a component using JSX code. Now, I will just create a component class here. So, I will just add a comment here and say component class. And just create a class. So I will just say class fruits and extend this class with the react dot component class right make sure the name of your component class is start with the capital letter right now in this class we will create render method so i will just say render and in this method i will just return a statement so i will just say return here now here i just wanted to return this ul tag and this nested li tag so if i just copy this and paste it here so I will just copy this statement and paste it here. Then the return statement only return the first line. These lines are not written with the return statement because return statement only return the single statement. To return multiple lines, we need to we need to use parentheses around these statements. So I will just get rid of this statement and say here parentheses. In this parentheses. I will just create a division tag so i will just say div and close this division tag and in this division tag i just wanted to copy this ul tag and li tag and paste it here and save my document now this component class is returning this statement right so here you don't need to use the nested elements right so i will just get rid of this statement and i will just call the fruit class right so i just wanted to call this fruit component here to call this component we are using jsx oops i just wanted to remove this comma here right now i just wanted to call this component class to call this component class we are using jsx so I will just use angle bracket and in this bracket I will just say fruits and say forward slash right and save my document. So now when you execute this document you will get the same result. But now the benefit of using this code is you can use this code in different files without repeating the code right. The component help us to use reusable code. Now I just wanted to show you how you can print the output of the variable in the JSX. Outputting a variable in the JSX is very simple. Let's say if you wanted to print a variable in the JavaScript. So I just wanted to create a variable here in the render method. So I will just select fruit item is equal to and specify a literal apple right now consider this variable is getting data from the server or from the user but we are just specifying a static value to this variable right now i just wanted to print this variable in this list you already know that if you wanted to print a variable in javascript then you can use concatenation method just like this you can use the plus sign to concatenate variable in the javascript program or you can just say Backtick to print a variable like this right so using these methods you can output the variable on the document in the javascript right in jsx you need to specify only a curly braces right using the curly braces you can print any variable data in the jsx so i will just get rid of this statement and here i will just create a list tag li and say class item and close this li tag 
and here I just wanted to print this variable data. So I will just say curly braces here and say fruit, oops, fruit item, right? And just save my document and execute this. So you will get your data on the document. So using the curly braces, you can add dynamic data into JSX code. You can get the data from the user or from the server and print on the UI. It is very simple to print data using the JSX. Isn't it? I hope you understand how to create a component using JSX. In this lecture, we are working with the JSX properties. As you know, when you create an element, you can specify properties to that element using keys and value pair. The properties are just like HTML attribute. You can specify key and value pair inside the JSX tag to define HTML attribute and React component properties. This is similar to the attribute syntax in HTML. In other words, if you need to pass properties, write them in JSX as you would in normal HTML. Also, you render standard HTML attributes by setting element properties. So let's consider the following example. So if you wanted to create a simple anchor tag with href attribute, then you can do that using the create element method like this. So using the create element method, you can create a simple anchor tag with the attribute href and specify some text to the anchor tag. Using hard coded values for attribute isn't flexible. If you want to reuse the link component, then the href must change to reflect a different address each time. This is called dynamic setting values versus hard coded them. So next we will go step further and consider the component that can use dynamic generated values for attributes. To specify dynamic properties to your component, you can use component property. All you need to do is to use curly braces inside angle bracket to pass dynamic values of properties to elements. For example, if you wanted to create an anchor tag and specify href, title and target property to the anchor tag, the href and target property must be different and not hard coded. Then the href and the target property must be a dynamic value and not hard coded. So I will just create a component to render an anchor tag using a property URL, label and target. So I will just create a simple anchor tag with href title and target property first and then we'll show you how to create a property using JSX, right? So I will just create a simple anchor tag here. So right now we have a simple division tag with the ID container and we'll just select this division tag using get element by ID method and store in the container variable, right? Just after that here, I just wanted to create a component. So I will just say component here and I will say class share and we will just extend this class with react.component right now I just wanted to call the render method first because it is necessary to call render method and then just say return. And what I wanted to return is, I wanted to return a division tag with an anchor tag with its attributes. So I will just say parenthesis here. And in this parenthesis, I will just create a division tag and just close this division tag. And here I will just say A, which is my anchor tag and specify href attribute. And the value is gonna be my website name. So I will just say HTTP www.dailywebtuition.com and the second attribute we'll specifying is target property so i will just say blank here and the third attribute is title and the title is gonna be my site and just close this ankle bracket just close this anchor tag and specify text visit website right now i just wanted to create a render method to render this component in the ui so i will just go here and say 
render UI and just say react dome dot render and call the share component right so I will just specify angle bracket and just say share here right and just wanted to append this component in the container I will just save this document and just execute right so you will get your link on the document I will just go to inspect and just see my attributes so I'll just click on the body the division tag and the div right so this is your attribute this is your href link the target property and the title right now when you look at the code the attribute are hard-coded it means if you wanted to reuse the link component then the href must change to reflect the different address each time now to specify dynamic property to the component you can use component property so i will just show you how you can specify attribute value dynamically right to specify dynamic value to the attribute i will just get rid of these hard-coded values so i will just get rid of this link and here i will specify curly braces you know that you can use this curly braces to output the variable data you can use this curly braces to execute javascript code also so i will just say here this dot property and specify my property name so i will just say url here right so here oops i just wanted to delete this now here we'll just create the url property to the component class right just after that i will just create a title property also so i will just remove this hard coded value specify curly braces and say this dot property dot label right so here we have two properties url and the label when you execute this you will get nothing because we did not specify any data to the dynamic values but where the data is coming from the data is coming from the instance of a component when you create a component instance in the render method when you specify component in the render method the instance of a component will have been created and the properties initialized now you need to specify values to these dynamic properties to do that here we have an instance of a class right so this is the instance of a class and we need to specify values to these properties so i will just say here url equal to and specify value right so i will just create a variable so i will just say here let address and specify hard coded value so i will just say http www dot daily web tuition dot com and just oops and just create another variable to lb and specify my site right now i will just use this variable here so I will just specify this value to this property so I will just say curly braces here and say address to specify second property value I will just say here label is equal to and in the curly braces I will say LB right and save my document so when you execute this you will get your attributes right so this is your href attribute this is target property and this is my title right so now you can specify dynamic data to your component but manually specifying every property one by one is very complicated what if you want to specify different properties to the anchor tag no matter what the properties are there you don't want to pass each property individually because that is more code the more code will create complication don't pass the properties individually when your intention is to pass all of them. JSX offer a spread operator. 
Using the spread operator, you can specify multiple properties no matter what the properties are. To specify multiple properties using the spread operator, you don't need to manually specify any property to the anchor tag. So I will just get rid of this statement. And here, we just need to specify only one single spread operator property. So I will just specify curly braces here and just specify spread operator this dot property right so here we have our spread operator right now here i just wanted to call the property in the text you can use these properties in the text also so if i just remove this website text and say here this dot property dot label then the label text will display here right now i just wanted to remove this code and here i will just specify a simple html like attributes here so i will just say href here and the value is coming from the address variable and the label oops and the label is equal to lb we'll just initialize the label property and just after that i will just say id and the id gonna be my link and the class is gonna be redirect right so you can specify multiple properties to this component right Using this spread operator, you can specify multiple properties to this component. And you will get your anchor tag over here. Right? So here we have href attribute, the label attribute, the ID, and the class redirect. Right? So using the spread operator, you can specify different properties on the go. You don't need to manually specify properties in the component and then specify in the react dom.render method. In this lecture, we are going to understand how to create method in component class. You are free to use and create any component method for your application. In the previous lectures, we had learned how to create properties in the component class. So we use those properties to initialize component attributes. Now we are going to understand how to create methods in the component class because react component is a class so you can create any type of method in the component. These methods can help you to reuse the component logic. To call this method in JSX you can use curly braces. As you know curly braces used to print data of the variable or you can call any JavaScript code in the curly braces. You can call your method in the render method also or you can call it manually. Now let's take an example and let's understand how to create react component method in the JavaScript. Let's take a look at the example and understand how to create method in react component. Right? So let's get started. So here in this example, I have index.html file. In this file, here I have division tag with the ID container. So whatever I create in the JSX, I will put them in this division tag this is my script tag and the type of the script is text babble now here you can write your pure react code so i will just select my division tag using the get element by id and store in the container variable now just after that here i will just create a component so to create a component you need to create a component class so i will just say class logic so the name of my component is logic and then i will just extend this class to react dot component right just after that in this class i will just call render method and in the render method i will just return something so to return multiple statement i will just use parenthesis right now i just wanted to return an anchor tag here so i will just first create a division tag 
and just close this division and in this division tag I will create an anchor tag with href attribute right and just close this anchor tag and here I will just specify href attribute value so I just wanted to specify dynamic value here so I will just remove this double quote and specify curly braces and say this dot properties dot url right now i just wanted to, so here we just created a property of logic class right so using this statement you can create properties to your class just after that i just wanted to create some text so i will just say here my site right just after that i just wanted to render this anchor tag in the root dom i will just say react dom dot render and on the first argument i will just call the component so i will just say logic here and close this component by forward slash and just close this component just after that i will just call the second argument and say container here so here we have a simple anchor tag before we execute this statement, you need to initialize this URL property. To initialize this URL property, I will just say here URL is equal to and in the double quote, I will say HTTP www.dailywebtuition.com Right? So this property is initialized when we call this logic component. Right? But this is not we wanted to learn. We wanted to learn how to create a method in the component class. To create a method in component class, you need to just create a method here, just like you create in the class. So I will just enter here and here I will just create a method. So I will just say get text and specify parentheses. And in the curly braces, here you can specify your statements for your method so this is your simple method and in this method i will just specify return statement so i will just say return and i just wanted to return a text so i will just say get from the method right and just close this statement with semicolon now this method is not called yet so i will just call this method here in the text so i will just remove this my site text and say here get text if you call this method directly in the jsx then this statement is not a valid statement in jsx to call this method you need to specify curly braces around it so i will just specify curly braces here and here as i said earlier you can call any javascript code within these curly braces so to call this method you need to specify this curly braces and just say get text method here right if you execute this you will get nothing on the document you just need to specify an object here so i will just specify this dot get text method so now the javascript know that where he wanted to get this method from so the javascript will get this method from this object from this class right so the javascript will just call this get text method and print the text on the document right so i will just save this document and execute it right so you will get your text on the document so i will just go to inspect and just wanted to show you the properties and the text so here is your property you, here is your href attribute and the, te and the text goes here. So this is your text, right? It is very simple to create methods in JSX, right? Now, what if you wanted to create a comment in JSX? If you just say here, a single line comment, I will just say double slash and just say here, this is a comment. Then the JSX is not recognized this code because jsx will first transcompile in the javascript and then execute the code if you wanted to create comment in jsx you need to wrap this comment in the curly braces right 
So to create a multi-line command in JSX, I will just create curly braces here and just specify forward slash asterisk asterisk forward slash as you would in JavaScript, right? And just say here this is multi-line command, right? Now, what if you wanted to create single line command? Then you can just do that here also. So I'll just say the forward slashes and just say this is a single line command, right? Well, you can do the same thing in the JSX tag also. You can create single line command here also. So I will just click here just before the closing angle bracket and just enter here and you can create a single line command and multi line command here also i will just say here called method right it's very simple and just save my document and you will get the same result so i hope you understand how to create a method in react component class that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture in this lecture, we will understand how to create if and else statement in the JSX. In the previous lectures, we had learned how to create method in the component class. In this lecture, we will create a method and change the component view and also learn how to use if and else statement in JSX. Most of us love to change component based on the user input. In that situation, if and else condition help you out. In the most of the cases, if you want to change the view based on the user input, then you need to use condition for that. Using if and else statement, we will change the user view based on the condition. Now, let's consider the following example and understand how to use if and else statement and change the view based on the if and else condition. So here, in this example, we already have a division tag with id container and we use get element by id method and store this container in the variable right just after that here we have a logic component already declared and extend its component with react component class and here we have a react dom dot render method and we'll just render this component right now i just wanted to create a method here to return addition of two numbers so I will just create a method. So in the previous lecture, we learned how to create a method. So we'll just simple say expression here. The name of my method, specify parentheses to declare this as a method and specify curly braces and just return addition of two numbers. So before we return anything, we need to specify argument here. So I will just say A and B. So now we wanted to return addition of this a and b so i will just say here a plus b right i just wanted to return addition of these two numbers just after that here i will just call my render method so i will just say render and in this render method i just wanted to call this expression method so i will just create a variable here so i will just say let permission is equal to this dot expression and specify a and b argument value so here i will just say four and one right so the addition of these two numbers is five right so using if and else statement we will just check if the addition of these two number is equal to five then i just wanted to execute the if block otherwise execute else block so I will just create if and else statement here. So I will just comment here and say if and else. So I will just say if permission, this permission variable is equal to five, then I just wanted to execute this if block. Otherwise, execute this else block, right? So in the if block, I will just say return and specify parentheses to specify multiple statement and just say here div close this division tag and just create h3 heading tag close this h3 heading tag and just specify 
you are successfully log in right welcome daily now if this condition become true then i just wanted to execute this statement right and if this condition become false then i just wanted to execute this statement so here we have one view and we have another view in the else statement so to create another view i will just copy this division tag and paste it here so before we paste it here we need to specify a return keyword so i will just say return and in the parentheses i will just say division tag here right so i will just copy and paste this division tag here and just change the message and i will just say here sorry you don't have permission to enter right and just save this document and just execute it so when you execute this you will get your successfully login message on the document because the addition of these two number is equal to 5 let's say if you just specify 3 here the addition of these two numbers is not equal to 5 then this condition is become false and the if statement will execute else block so i will just save this document and execute it so you will get sorry you don't have permission to enter so if the user specify different input then the user will get a different view based on their input right so if an else statement will help you to specify view based on the user input right so now what if you wanted to specify style to this h3 heading tag like you do in the css to specify style to h3 heading tag i will just specify here right and to specify value to this style you need to specify curly braces i will just say equal sign here and just specify curly braces so i will just create a variable here so i will just say let light red is equal to and in the curly braces i will just say color is gonna be f f6 f59 right i will just specify hex color and just specify this variable in the style here right light red so if you save this document and just change the view then you will get this beautiful text on the document right this is not the way you specify style in html this is very different method to specify style than the html tag to specify html like tag you just need to specify curly braces here let me show you how so i will just remove this variable from here and just specify curly braces right so the first curly braces is for jsx the second curly braces is for javascript object literal right in this curly braces i will just say color and just specify color here right and just remove this statement just execute this now you will see the color on the text right so using this method you can specify multiple style to your react element right i hope you understand how to create view based on the if and else condition right we will see you in the next lecture in this lecture we will understand what is node.js when you wanted to create react application you have to install node.js in your local computer but why we need to install node.js and what is node.js in this lecture we will solve these questions so what is node.js node.js is a javascript runtime environment the node runtime environment include everything you need to execute a program written in javascript both your browser javascript and node.js run on the version 8 javascript runtime engine 
This engine takes your JavaScript code and convert it into a faster machine code. Machine code is just a low level code which the computer can run without needing to first interpret it. Node.js package ecosystem NPM is the largest ecosystem of open source libraries in the world. Node.js is open source server environment and is free. Node.js run on various platforms like Windows, Linux, Unix, macOS, etc. Node.js uses JavaScript on the server. Node.js runs single-threaded, non-blocking, asynchronously programming, which is very memory efficient. Now, let's understand what is module in Node.js. In JavaScript, the word modules refers to the small unit of independent reusable code. Consider modules to be the same as JavaScript libraries. A set of functions you want to include in your application. A node module is a reusable block of code those exist does not accidentally impact other code. You can write your own modules and use it in various applications. Node.js has a set of built-in modules which you can use without any further installation. So let's understand what is npm. npm is a node package manager for Node.js packages or you can say modules if you like. npm hosts thousands of free packages to download and use. The npm program is installed on your computer when you install Node.js. A package in Node.js contains all the files you need for your module. Modules are JavaScript libraries you can include in your project. So let's see how you can download modules in your application. Downloading a package is very easy. Open a command line interface and tell npm to download the package you want. So I want to download a package called autocomplete. npm create a folder named node modules where the package will be placed. All packages you install in future will be placed in this folder. My package now has a folder structure like this. Now let's understand how to install Node.js on your local computer. First, you need to open your browser and search for Node.js. You will get the result and just click on the first official website of Node.js and here you can download your Node.js application. From the official website, download the Node.js application by clicking on the green button right from here, right? I already downloaded this application in my local computer, so I will just open this by double clicking on the file. Here you just need to run your application. Then you will get your welcome setup wizard window on the computer. So just say next here, accept terms and license agreement and press next. Specify your node.js path where you wanted to install this application. So I will just leave this as it is. And just press next button press next and press install now just wait until your application being installed on your local computer now the application is installed on your computer to check the application properly installed or not call the command prompt so I will just press Windows R because I am using Windows. So I will just say Windows R on my computer and say CMD and press enter. Now you will see your command prompt window open. To check your application is properly installed or not, just type command node hyphen V. This command will check if the Node.js is installed on your local computer or not and just print the version name on the command prompt. Right? So now the application is completely installed on your computer. To check npm is installed or not, you, you can just say npm hyphen v. So you will get your version and confirmation that the npm is installed on your computer. So Node.js is completely installed on your computer. So we had set up the environment of React application. In the next lecture, we will create React application using npm. I hope you understand this lecture. That is all for now. We will see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we will understand what is npm and how to create your first React application. In the previous lecture, we had learned how to download Node.js in your local computer. Now we will understand what is npm and how to use it to create a React application. When you install Node.js, npm is automatically installed in your system. 
npm is a package manager for javascript and world largest software registry it is used to discover packages of reusable code npm consists of three distinct components the website the command line interface the cli and the registry we are using the website to discover packages set up profiles and manage other aspect of your npm experience the cli runs on the terminal and it is how the most developer interact with npm the registry is a large public database of javascript software and the meta information surrounding it now let's understand what is the use of npm now the use of npm is to adopt packages of code for your apps or incorporate packages as they are you can also use npm to download standalone tools which you can use right away npm is also used to run packages without downloading using npx using npm you can share code with any npm user anywhere using npm you can restrict code to specific developers you can use npm to create organizations to coordinate package maintenance coding and developers npm is also used to manage multiple versions of code and code dependencies npm used to update application easily when underlying code is updated npm used to discover multiple ways to solve the same puzzle and the last npm use other developers who are working on similar problems and projects now understand how most of the developer use npm to install packages in their application Using CLI component of npm, you can install any packages from the repository. To install any packages in your application, you need to say a command npm install package name. But before you execute this command, make sure you have installed the latest version of npm in your system. To check that, you just need to type npm hyphen v and enter. So when you enter, the command will return the npm version on the console and you will know that the npm is installed in your local computer and you have this version after you get your version you wanted to create react application using this command you can also install package using npx command npx is identical to the npm command we will talk about the difference in npm and npx in the future tutorials right but just for now, to use npx in command, you just need to have a higher version of Node.js. npx comes with the npm 5.2 and a higher version. It is really beneficial to use npx other than using npm. You can just say npx hyphen v. So this will return the version name, right? So you will get npm version on the console. Now. Let's create a React application using npm CLI. Before you move ahead, make sure you have an internet connection to install these packages from the npm repository. First, in order to create a React application, you need to install globally create a React app npm package. To do that, you just need to type npm install hyphen g create react app hyphen g is a global install flag the hyphen g or you can say global argument will cause npm to install the package globally rather than locally and just specify package name so i will just say create react app here this will take some time to install this package globally setting up the tools to develop react application can be intimidating and time consuming there are a lot of moving parts for example, setting up Babel to transcompile JSX into browser-ready code and linking React and React Dome library to the document. So let's understand what is Create React App. Create React App is a tool built by developer at Facebook that gives you a massive head start when building React apps. It saves you from time-consuming setup and configuration. We already have a CLI installed globally now let's create our first react application to create your first react application you just need to say a command npx i have a higher version of npm 5.2 so i will just say npx space 
create react app space specify your name of your application so i will just say my app here this command will create your first react application create react app provide a modern build setup for your react app in no time to get started you will need to install create react app globally then you can create a new react project with a command create react app followed by the name of your project so in my case i am using my app project name so i will just say npx create react app and specify my application name so i will just say my app so now when you have your ready react application you need to execute this on the browser to do that you have a simple npm command so to execute this application on the browser you just need to type on the terminal npm start npm start command start the development server and auto reload the page anytime you make edits on the document right so this will start the server and execute your react application starting the server automatically launches the app in the browser on localhost 3000 or you can say 3000 so this is your first default react app created using node package manager it is very simple to create a react application using npm it is only take a few minutes to set up react application right now in the next lecture we will talk about file structure of react application and understand what is the use of package.json file that's it i hope you understand this lecture that is all for now we will see you in the next tutorial in this lecture we will understand the file structure of default react application created using create react app command along with that we will understand what is the use of package.json file in the previous lecture we had learned how to create your first react application using cli so as i said in the previous lecture if you wanted to create a react application you just need to say a command npx or npm create react app and specify your application name so in my case i used my app application we already created this app so i will just start the development server using npm start command right so i have a first react application created using cli now this application has a simple and a beautiful file structure i just want to explain this file structure and also describe what is the use of package.json file now let's explore the file structure when you expand your react application the first folder you will see is a node module this folder will put various things on your computer all packages are dropped in this node module folder you can access any packages from this folder using import keyword we already learned how to create a package or you can just say a module and import that module in javascript file the same mechanism used here also if you want you to import any packages you just need to say import package name and the location where you wanted to import that package the node module directory is where all the packages all the dependencies get built or stored if you expand node modules folder you will get plenty of packages installed in your application just after that here you will see public folder in this folder we have three files the favicon file which is the icon file then we have index.html file and then we have manifest.json file the first favicon file is the icon file that shows up in your browser address bar and is used as a icon for bookmarks in the public folder you have main index.html file index.html is the main html file that includes your react code and application that provide and context for react to render to specifically it include a div tag your react app will shows up inside so this is your div id root this is the most important part of your application this is where your react application gets rendered in your browser right now then we have manifest.json file you specify basic metadata about your extension such as the name and the version and you can also specify aspect of your extensions functionalities such as background scripts content script and browser actions just below that we have source folder this store all our modifiable data in this folder you will find index.js file 
index.js file store our main render call from the react dome object. It import our app.js component that we start up with react and tells react where to render it. Then we have index.css file for store the base styling for our application. Just after that we have app.js file. App.js file is a simple react component called app that we get for free when creating a new app. We will actually be deleted the entire content of the file and starting over, right? Then we have app.css file to styling our targeting component. Just after that, we have app.test.js file. This is our first set of tests to run against our simple app component that we start off with. Then we have logo.svg, it's just a React logo which you will see when you start the default React application server. Just after that, here we have servicesworker.js file. A services worker is a script that your browser runs in the background, separate from the web page, opening the door to features that don't need a web page or user interaction. Basic use of this file is to include features like push notification and background sync. Just after that, we have git ignore file git ignore file which used to see every file in your working copy as one of the three things to track a file to untrack the file and ignore the file which git has been explicitly told to ignore now just after that we have package log.json file package log.json file is automatically generated for any operations where the npm modifies either the node modules tree or package.json file it described the exact tree that was generated. Just after that, this is your readme file for your application. And this is your package.json file, which we will describe just right now. Next, let's understand what is package.json file. The package.json file is what store the list of dependencies for your application, as well as what describe your application. Just like your application name and the version, the description, the keywords and the license. Every React application need to have a package.json file. Package.json file used to describe your application. It describe your application name, version or in addition you can specify description, keyword, license, etc. Along with that, the package.json file lists the packages your project depends on. Specific version of the package that your project can use and makes your build reproducible and therefore easier to share with other developers. In package.json file, two fields are required, name and version. The name field represent your application name. Name field must be lowercase and one word and may contain hyphens and underscores. Then the second required field is the version. The version field represent the version of your application. The version field must be in semantic version, right? In this file, you will find dependencies. The dependency property takes an object that has the name and the version at which each dependency should be used. This object represent the module which we are depends on. So we are depending on React, React Dome and React Script module. You can find this module in node module folder. Just after that, we have a script section where all the script used in the application name and the version are specified. And just after that, here we have ESLint configuration file. This configuration file is to share target browser and Node.js version between different front end tools. Right? I hope you understand the file structure of React application and what is the use and what is package.json file. In this lecture, we will understand how to create our own component in React. In the previous lecture, we learned the file structure of React application and what is the package.json file. Now in this lecture, we will create our own component and create a fruit list in that component. So when you build your React application, the default component you will get is app component. So this is your first default component. So before we create our own component, I just wanted to start my development server. So to do that, in Visual Studio Code, I will just say control tilde operator and just start my development server. I already started my development server using npm start command. Before you execute this command, make sure you are in your application directory, right? 
so i am in my app directory so i will just say npm start command and press enter to start my development server right so this is my default react application now i just wanted to create my own component in react application to do that i will just cut this terminal i will just get rid of this header tag and here i will say h1 close my h1 heading tag and simply say hello world right and save my document and here you will get your hello world this text is centered because of this class name right we have a default class name here imported from app.css file this one so using this styling we have this text on center right just after that i just wanted to create my own component to do that here we have a source folder so whenever you wanted to create a component you need to create that component in the source folder so i will just select the source folder and create a directory to simplify the file structure so i will just create a directory here new folder and say component right so in this directory i will just create a file so i will just right click here and say new file and just name this file and just say root list dot jsx right now here i am using camel notation so the first letter of the first word is lowercase and the first letter of the second word is uppercase and just specify jsx extension this extension is helpful for html code completion right so i am using jsx here and just press enter so this is our first react component file so in this file you just need to import react dot component class right so you just need to say import react and i just wanted to import the react component class so i will just say here comma and in the parenthesis i will just say component right and i just wanted to import this component class from the react module right you can do the same thing with snippet also so what you need to do is just get rid of this statement and go to your extensions of visual studio code and just install this extension which is this simple react snippet using the simple react snippet you can create your code just like this if you wanted to import a react module here you just need to say imr and press tab this will import your react module and if you wanted to import your component class along with the react module you just need to say imr c this will import your react module with component class and just after that if you wanted to create a component class you just need to say cc so the cc stands for create component so this will create a component class for us right so you just need to install this extension in your Visual Studio code and just reload your browser. I will just close this tab and back to my fruit list.jsx file. Now here, now here I just wanted to import a React component class. So I will just say here imrc and press tab. Done. So here you have your React module with a component class, right? just after that here i just need to create a component class to create a component class i just need to say cc here so this will create your component class so i will just press enter right so here this class is extending the component class when you press enter the cursor is reflect on two location the first is just after the class name and second is just after the default keyword now here i just wanted to create a class so i will just say here root list right so now here you have state property we will understand what is the state property in the next lecture but just for now i will just get rid of the state property and here we have our render method with return keyword right now here this return keyword is returning multiple statements because here we have parenthesis 
and in this parenthesis what I will do is I will just create a division tag so I will just say div and press tab and you will get your opening and closing division tag there because of using .jsx extension of this file just after that I will just specify a class name so I will just say class name is equal to and the class name is gonna be app and just after in this division tag I will create h1 heading tag with hello world right and save this document and I will just remove this simple h1 heading tag from the app.js component I will just save this document when you save that development server will automatically reload and render your UI right so when you execute this you will get nothing because we did not render this component yet right so to render this component you just need to go to index.js file here you will find index.js file so here you will find react dome.render method so here you will see the render method is rendering app component I just wanted to render my fruit list component so uh, what I will do is I will just go to index.js file and just get rid of this app text and say here fruit list right and save my document but before you execute this you need to import this fruit list file in this index.js so to do that you just need to import this file so I will just say import name of your component so the name of my component is fruit list so I will just say fruit list and where you wanted to import this component so I will just say from and in the double code I will just specify dot forward slash this will refers to the source directory right just after that here I just wanted to select my component directory specify forward slash and this is my fruit list component so I will just enter here right so now our fruit list component is imported in index.js file now you can use this component here in react.render method I will just save this file and you will get hello world on the document right now I just want to create a fruit list in my component so I will just go to my fruit list component and I will just get rid of this h1 heading tag and here what I will do is I will just create order list I will just say curly braces here so as you know we are using this curly braces to bind variable values to the UI and you can also execute any JavaScript statement in this curly braces so here I will just create a property of fruit list component so here I will just say this dot property props dot and just create my property so I will just say fruits here just after that I will specify dot here and call map function now on each element of fruits property I will perform some operation so I will just use map function for that right so in map function I will just specify parameter so I will just say element here and call an arrow and just specify a statement so I will just say here li close this li tag and just wanted to print this element right so I will just click here and say curly braces and specify my element so now on each element of fruit list I will create li tag and print on the UI I will just save this document so when you execute this you will get this error the error says that cannot read property map of undefined because we did not initialize this fruit list property so I will just go to index.js file and here you can initialize your fruits property so what you will need to do is you just need to say fruits is equal to and in the curly braces you just need to specify an array so I will just say add it here and specify my fruits so I will just say here mango banana and apple right this fruit list property is initialized with an array 
So the map function will get each array element and print on the UI, right? So I will just save this index.js file and you will get your mango, banana and apple on your document, right? It is very simple to create a React component in the React application. In the next lecture, we will understand what is state and how you can use that. That's it. I hope you understand how to create component in React application. We will see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we will understand what is state in React. In the previous lecture, we had learned how to create a component properties and how to use it. Now in this lecture, we will understand what is the use of state and its benefit. Right? So let's understand what is state. Without state, your React application is just a glorified static template. Using state, you can make your application interactive. I hope you excited as I am because understanding state will help you to build interesting applications. Imagine that you are building an autocomplete input text box. When you type in it, you want to make a request to the server to fetch information about matches to show on the web page. So far, you have worked with the properties and you have learned that by changing properties, you can get different views. But properties can't change in the context of the current component because they are passed on the component creation. In other words, you can say properties are immutable in the current component, meaning you don't change properties in this component unless you recreate the component by passing new values from a parent. It means if you wanted to change a property of a component, you need to extend that component and change its property, or you can just recall the component and then change the property. Then how do you change the view if your properties are unchangeable? In this situation, you have state object. With React component state, you can build meaningful interactive React application. State is a core concept that lets you to build React components that can store data and the argument views based on data change. A React is a mutable data store of components, self-contained, functionality, centric blocks of UI and logic. Mutable means state values can change anytime. State data is often used to display dynamic information in a view to augment the rendering of views. State is not a component property, it is an attribute of component. To work with state, you can access them by name. This name is an attribute of the this.state object. The state can be two types, a singular and plural. If you just specify state, then this attribute refers to the individual attribute of this dot state object in component. And states almost always refers to the multiple attributes of the state object of the component. React takes core of keeping views up to date when the state uses in the view changes. In essence, when state changes, only a corresponding part of views change. Everything else in the DOM remains intact. This is possible due to the virtual DOM. React developer use state to generate new UIs. Let's understand how to access state. The state object is an attribute of component and can be accessed with a this reference. For example, this dot state dot name. So using this statement, we are creating a property called name. This syntax is similar to the way you access properties with this dot property dot name, right? Now, let's understand what is the difference between state and property. State and properties are both attribute of class, meaning they are this dot state and this dot props. That's the only similarity. One of the primary difference between states and properties is that the former are mutable, whereas the latter are immutable. Another difference between properties and state is that you can pass properties from parent components whereas you define state in the component itself, not its parent. So properties determine the view upon creation and then they remain static, they don't change. The state on the other hand is set and updated by the object. Properties and states serve different purposes but both are accessible as attributes of the component class and both help you to compose components with a different representation or you can say views, right? So in the next lecture, we will understand how to create a component with state attribute. I hope you understand what is the use of state in the React application. In the next lecture, we will understand what is the use of state to change value dynamically. 
that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture in this lecture we will understand how to use state in the component in the previous lecture we had learned how to create a fruit list using the properties now in this lecture we will create a current time and display them in the browser so we will create this example in two ways first using the properties and second using the state so we will first create this example using properties so i will just create a component in the component directory so i will just right click here and say new file and just name this file as timer dot jsx right so this is my new component and in this component i will first import my react and the component class so i will just say i am r c and press enter so this will import the react component just after that i will create a class here so i'll just say cc and just select the simple snippet and just create a class you will get two cursors now here you just need to create your component so i will just name my component so here we just created a timer component and extend it to react component class now here you will see your state property we will take this property after a few minutes but just for now i will just create a ui for my application so in the return statement i will just create a division tag so i will just say div and specify a class name and the class name is gonna be app and just after that in this division tag i will just create h1 heading tag with the text current time right just after that here i just wanted to create a property so i will just say here curly braces and in this curly braces i will just create a property date so i will just say this dot properties dot date right so this statement will create a date property here so before you execute this property you need to specify this property in the react dom dot render method when we call the component right so i will just go to index.js file and just here i will just rename this fruit list component to timer and just wanted to import this component so i will just say import timer from and just specify dot forward slash i just wanted to import this component from component directory and just select my component here right now i just wanted to initialize this property here so i will just say date is equal to and in the curly braces now here i just wanted to create an instance of the date object this instance will return the date object to this date property right so i will just create an instance so i will just say new date right so the date class will return the date to this date property i will just save this document and just after that in timer.jsx so here we have date in the date object now i just wanted to get the time from this date object to get the time i will just say dot here and call a method which is to local time string so i will just say to local time string and specify parenthesis right so this method will get the current time right and i will just wrap this statement in h2 heading tag so i will just create an h2 heading tag here and just wrap this here and i will just say it is and this is my time right save this document and just execute it so i will just start my development server so i will just so here i will just say cls to clear my screen and just first enter into my application so i will just say cd my app name of my application and enter and just after that i will say npm start and press enter so this command will start the development server So this will start your server on localhost 3000 oops forgot to specify e here right i will just save this document and right here you will get your current time after every one second i just wanted to update this time right now to do that i will just go to my timer.jsx file here this is my component i will just 
close this window now here I will just create a method so I will just say oops so I will just say call me right in this method I will just call set interval method so this method will call this date object on every one second so I will just say here set interval and in the parenthesis I will just create a function so I will just specify parenthesis here call my arrow and just specify body of that function right now I just wanted to execute this function after every one second to do that I will just specify comma here to specify second argument so this is my timer argument and here I will say 1000 millisecond so the 1000 millisecond is equal to one second right now here I just wanted to change the value of the date property and update the date after every one second so here I will just say this dot property dot date and I will just specify a value so I will just say new date here right so this function will execute every one second and specify a new date to the date property right and then the date property will get the time and display on the document I will just save my changes right and just after that I will just call this method so what I will do is I will just call here curly braces and say call me right so this will call this method right and this method will execute after every one second so I will just save this document oops you will get an error the error says you cannot access to read only property date so this error will show you you cannot change the property of an object as you know in the previous lecture we learned the properties are immutable you can't change the properties in that situation you have a state object now let's convert the same example using the state object right so in this timer component I will just initialize my state property now I just want to create a state property to do that I will just click here in the object and I just want to specify key and value pair here the state of the component will get the object and takes the value using key and value pair so I will just say here date colon and specify an instance here so I will just say new date right I will just delete that to initialize the state you need to use state property just after that here we just need to change this property to state so we just get rid of this statement now here I just wanted to update this property right so what I will do is I will just say here this dot set state so set state is a method so this set state method will update your state property asynchronously using this method you can asynchronously update your state without updating your complete dome so this method will just update the value which is modified previously the set state method will figure out the previous value and just change the value to the current value right so using this method you can update your set state object so in this parameter I will just going to specify an object here so this is my state object and I will just specify this property right so what I will do is I will just say here date colon new date right so I will just save these changes I just wanted to replace this property to state so I will just remove this property and say state here right save these changes and in index.js file I will just remove this date property save these changes and here you will get your timer so I will just right click here and say inspect and just go to my body section and in this body you will get your root element this is division tag your app element and this is the h1 heading tag so here you will see only the h2 heading element is updating not the complete dome the benefit of using virtual dome is this so here you will see the only h2 element is updating 
not the whole DOM. So using set state method, you can update your component state, right? That's it. Now you understand how to use state property in your application. In the next lecture, we will move further and understand the more concept regarding to the state property. In this lecture, we will take another example of state attribute of the component class as well as you will understand how to install bootstrap library in your application to glorify your template. We will simply create a clickable button and increase the value of state attribute when we click on the button. I am using the timer component created in the previous lecture. So I just wanted to create a component UI. So I will just create a division tag in the render method. So I will just say here, I will just specify parenthesis and just create a division tag and specify class name. The end should be camo case. And here I will specify app class, right? Now in this division tag, I will just create h5 heading tag and specify text zero. And just after that, I will create a button here and specify text, click me, right? Now, I just wanted to install Bootstrap library in my application. Bootstrap is a most popular front-end component library, which helps you to build responsive mobile first project, as well as the library provide us a beautiful UI for the components. Now, to install the Bootstrap library, you just need to open your terminal. I will just say here, control tilde. You can see, I already started my development server, so we don't need to execute this command again. So I will just leave this as it is and just add another terminal. So I will just click on this add button. So I will just say CLS to clear my screen and just say here. So here, you just need to enter into your application. To do that, you just need to say CD my app name of your application and press enter right so now you are in your application directory just after that here if you wanted to install any package from the npm you just need to say a command npm install and now i just wanted to include this package in the dependencies also so i will just say here hyphen hyphen save so this will save your package in the dependencies and just specify your package name so i will just say here bootstrap right and just press enter this will install the bootstrap library in your application now your package is installed you can find your package in the node modules folder right so i will just close this window to use bootstrap classes you need to include bootstrap css file in your application to do that i will just go to index.js file and here i will just import so i will just say here double quote and say bootstrap forward slash specify your directory so where you find your bootstrap.css file let me show you just click on the node modules here just find bootstrap package right just enter into bootstrap package and just go to dist folder and just click on the css folder now here you just need to include this bootstrap.css file here to do that, just specify the absolute path of this bootstrap.css library. So here we have a bootstrap folder. Then I just wanted to specify this folder. Then I will just say CSS and then specify bootstrap.css file. Right? So now we had successfully inserted the bootstrap library in the document. Now you can use bootstrap classes in your project. Now I will just go to timer component. Now I will just open my development server. So you will get the zero text and this is your button. Now to change the button UI, you just need to specify a class to this button element. So I will just say class name is equal to btn, btn warning. So this is the bootstrap class to specify light yellow color. So I will just save this document. And this is what you have, right? So this will just glorify the button just after that. Now, I just wanted to create a constructor here to the timer class, right? So I will just say constructor, specify parenthesis and the curly braces, right? 
So in this example, we are initializing state using the constructor. So I will just say constructor here. Don't forget to call this super method. So I will just say super and specify parenthesis here. Now the super method will call the constructor of extended class, right? So this will call the constructor of component class. The benefit of creating a constructor is to initialize properties or state before mounting component in the UI. Now, when you create a component constructor, you need to pass property parameter. The constructor for a React component is called before it is mounted. Otherwise, this dot property will be undefined in the constructor, which can be lead to bugs. So I will just create a state here. So I will just say this dot state is equal to unspecify object, right? So I will just specify key and value pair. So the first property I will specify in this object is value and initialize this value with this dot property dot me. I just wanted to create this me property and specify this value to this state value property, right? Now I will just say here a paragraph. I will just create a paragraph here and in this paragraph specify curly braces and say this dot state dot and specify value, right? So here I just call this value. I will just save this document and in index.js file, I will just initialize the me property. So I will just say here me is equal to props right and just save this document so when you execute this you will get an error the error says cannot feed property me of undefined so the me property is now undefined if you initialize this property in the constructor so here we created this property in the constructor now here the constructor is called before the react component is mounted that is why you will get undefined value to this me property to solve this problem you need to specify an argument here. So I will just say props. You can specify any name to this parameter and just pass this parameter to the super class. So I will just say props here also, right? Save this document. So you will get props on the console. So you will get props on the document, right? Now you know that the use of this parameter, I will just get rid of this statement and just create another property and value so I will just say here counter and the value is gonna be zero and just after that create another property so I will just say message and the value is gonna be click me right I will just call this property here so you will get click me text so I will just get rid of this click me text and say here this dot state dot message right save this document you will get this output now i just wanted to create click event on this button and when we click on this button i just wanted to increase this value right so i will just create and click event here so i will just say on click is equal to and we are just specifying a function here to call the function you just need to specify a curly braces right so here you can call any JavaScript code in this curly braces. We will understand the events after a few lectures, but just for now on click is just a click event on the button. So we are just embedding this on click event to this button. In this curly braces, I will just call a function. So the function is this dot on click, right? So before we call this function here, I just need to create that first. So here I will just create this function so i will just say on click and specify an arrow function here so i will just say equal to specify parenthesis specify your arrow to call the arrow function and the body right so now this is your valid javascript function now in this function i just need to update these state values when we click on this button so when we click on this button the event will call this function and I just need to update these state values here. So what I will do is I will just call this dot set state method and just specify parenthesis. There are two ways to initialize state in the react component inside the constructor and directly inside the class. In the previous lecture we had learned 
how to create a state directly inside the class. Now here we just initialize the state property in the constructor, right? So just after that, here we just call set state method. Calling this method will cause React to re-render your application and update the DOM, right? And in this parenthesis, I will just call an object. So I will just specify parenthesis here. And the first property is this. I just wanted to update this counter variable. So I will just say counter. And the counter value is gonna be this dot state dot counter and just say plus one here just after that now i just wanted to update this state property as well so i will just say here message and specify a value so i will just say clicked right so when you click on this button i just wanted to update this text as well as the counter value so I just wanted to specify this counter value here. So I will just get rid of this text and specify curly braces and call this dot state dot counter property, right? And just save my document. So when you click on this button, I just wanted to update this value. So I will just click here. And when you click on this button, this text will update to clicked, right? So I'll just click here, right? So this text is updated to click and the value you will get is one. I will just click on this button again. You will get two, click again, you will get three and you can click on this button and increase the value of the state property, right? As simple as that. So I will just right click here and say inspect and just go to body section of this document and just click on this div, this app division tag and this is the h5 state property right i just want to update this property here so i will just click here and you will see only this element is updating not the complete dom so i will just click here right so when i click on this button you will see this h5 element is updating not anything else I will just click here again right so you can see this element is updating when we click on this button so this is the benefit of virtual dome that's it now you have learned two ways to create a state property of a component class that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture in this lecture we will understand how to create a stateless functional component in the previous lecture, we had learned how to create a stateful component with a class. There is another way to create a component in React using a function. Yes, you heard it right. Using a function, you can create stateless functional component. But why I am using stateless word before the functional component? The reason behind that, you can't declare a state attribute to this component if you create this component using a function. You can use class component if you are going to use state but if you are not using state then the functional component is very easy to create and understand. Well, you can use properties also in the functional component if you need. Functional component is more readable and understandable than the class component. Stateless functional component is just a pure JavaScript function. When you create a functional component, you don't need to create a class and don't need to specify this reference to any object. Stateless functional components are useful for presentational components. Presentational components focus on the UI rather than behavior. So it's important to avoid using state in presentational components. So in simple words, functional component is focused on the UI. One of my students asked me why we need to use functions. The reason behind that is you can use functions anywhere and you can use the same code more than once. This example will definitely help you to understand the use of function and understand how to create a stateless functional component. So in component directory, I will just create another component file. So I will just right click here and say new file and just specify a name to this file. So I will just say functional component dot jsx right and just enter so this will create a new file 
and in this file you just need to import only a react module you don't need to import a component class because we are not extending or we are not creating any class here so you just need to import a react module here so i will just say imr and enter right so this will import the react module just after that here i will just create a function so i will just create a pure ecmascript 6 function here so i will just say constant box is equal to and just specify parenthesis call my arrow and the body of this function right so this is the pure es6 function now when you create this function just after that i just wanted to export this function because i wanted to use this function in other files so i will just say export default and specify this function name so i will just say box here right so you can use this function outside of this file so this function will take a parameter which is properties so i will just say properties here oops right and this function will return jsx elements so i will just say here return right to return multiple statements i will just say parenthesis semicolon now here you can return multiple statements so i will just create div element here so i will just say div and specify a class name so i will just say class name is equal to here i will just call bootstrap classes so i will just call here dplex flex row so this class will create every child element on the single row right and here i will just say spawn and just say here element one right save my changes and just go to index.js file and here we just first need to import this box function so i will just say import box from now here you just need to specify where you want you to import this function so i will just say dot forward slash component forward slash and specify this function com file here right so here in this file i have my box function specify semicolon and just remove this app component and say box here right save my changes and start my development server so i will just say control till i already started my development server so i'll just open my browser so i'll just close this window so you will get element one on the document so this will create a simple element for us so here you will see you don't need to create a class or you don't need to create this reference and anything so here you can create properties as well so to create a property you can just say here curly braces and just say this dot properties wait you don't need to use this keyword in the function right so just delete this keyword from here and just say here properties dot me so this is my property i just need to initialize this property so i will just go to index file and just say here me is equal to props and save the changes when you execute this you will get your property on the document right as i said you don't need to use this keyword to these properties right now i will just remove this property and specify one here now what if i wanted to create this element multiple times let's say if i wanted to create this element three times so i will just copy this element paste it here and paste it here so this will create the same span element three times but this is not the way the smart developer work because here we are using the same code again and again to smartly create the span tag i will just show you how you can do that so i will just remove this span tag from here and just create a function here so what i will do is i will just say here let element is equal to create es6 function and in this function i will just create a division tag but before i create a division tag you need to specify return keyword so i will just say return 
and just in the parenthesis you can specify your JSX code so I will just say div here and in this div you can wrap this span type I will just cut this span type and paste it here just after that I just want to specify some classes so I will just say class name is equal to I wanted to specify a border to this span tag as well as padding 3 margin 2 and the background color is going to be light and now I just want to change this one value and specify this value from the parameter so I will just say value here you can remove this parenthesis because we are specifying only one argument and just specify this argument here All right just after that I just wanted to call this function here All right so I will just wrap this function in the span tag and just call this function so I will just say curly braces here and say element and in the parenthesis I just need to specify the element number so I will just specify this argument in this parenthesis I will just say one here just after that I will add some padding to this division tag so I will just say padding four here save the changes and here you will see your first element so as I said using the function you can call the same code multiple times more than once so I will just call this function multiple times so the use of this function is to just create a UI of the span tag right so you can use this function to create a span tag multiple times so if I wanted to create this span tag just after this span tag I can say here span and just call this function again so I will just say element and specify parenthesis so I will just say two here I will just copy this statement paste it here and just specify three here save the changes and you will get your three elements on the document right now I hope you understand the benefit of using functions I hope you understand how to create a stateless functional component that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture in this lecture we are going to understand the react component lifecycle in many situations in which you need to more granular control over a component for instance if you are creating a checkbox we change the size when we click on it based on the screen width or wanted to create a component which call an ajax request when we mount the component in the ui the best approach is to use component lifecycle event by mounting events you can inject the necessary logic into component moreover you can use other events to make components smarter by providing specific logic about whether or not to re-render their views. Each component has several lifecycle methods that can overwrite to run code at particular times in the process. These methods are called in the following order when an instance of a component is being created and inserted into a DOM. Let's say you create a component and just start your development server. The React lifecycle event will first call the constructor method of the class which create an instance of a component then it will call the get derived state from the props method this will return an object to update the state or null to update nothing then it will just call the method render which render the component in the ui the react component event lifecycle belongs to three categories mounting events updating events and unmounting events the mounting events happen when the react element is attached to the DOM node. Then we have updating events. This event is happen when a react element is updated as a result of a new values of its properties are set. Then we have unmounting events. These events happen when a react element is detached from the DOM. Each and every react component has lifecycle event that are triggered at certain moments depending on what a component has done or will do. In these three categories, React defines several component events. Mounting In React, mounting invokes events only once. Then we have updating. In updating, React can invoke events many times. And in unmounting events, React invokes events only once. 
In addition to lifecycle event, we will include constructor to illustrate the order of execution from start to finish during the component lifecycle. Constructor method happens when the element is created and lets you to set default properties and set. In these three categories, we have several methods. So we have first mounting events. In the mounting event, we have two methods. First is component will mount and second is component did mount. So the first component will mount will happen before mounting to the dome. Then we have component did mount. This method will happen after mounting and re-rendering, right? Then we have updating events. In this event, we have four methods. First, component will receive props, it means properties. Then we have should component update. Then we have component will update. And the last, component did update. So the first, component will receive props will happen when the component is about to receive properties. The second method is should component update. This method will return boolean value lets you to optimize the component re-rendering by determining when to update and when to not update. Just after that, we have third method which is component will update. This method is happened right before the component is updated. And the last, we have component did update. So this method is happened right after the component updated. Just after that, we have a third category which is unmounting. In this category, we have a function which is component will unmount function. This function will let you unbind and detach any event listener or do other cleanup work before the component is unmounted. Each of these functions give you more granular control over a component. These methods are very simple to remember. Event name makes clear to developer when the event is triggered. For example, component did update method is fire when the component is updated. So this method says that this method is fire when the component is updated. So the name of this component is refers to the action, right? In the next lecture, we are going to take each of these three categories and understand its methods. That's it. I hope you understand this lecture. That is all for now. We will see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to understand mounting events. In React Component Lifecycle, we have mounting events in which we have four methods. We are already familiar with two methods of mounting events, which is constructor and render. You already know what is the use of constructor and render method. And these two methods are part of mounting events. Now, let's understand the other two methods, which is not that much important like these two are but important when you are building an application. Now, let's understand how you can implement these two methods. So I will just first create a new component in my application. So here I have my component directory. I will just right click here and say new file and just create a new component. So I will just say life cycle dot JSX, right? And here just import the react module with component class. I am RC and press enter. Just after that, I just wanted to import the dome module also. So I will just say I am R import react dome, right? And just say enter. Just after that, here I will create a class. So I just need to say CC. So this will create a simple class for us, right? And just specify a class name. So I will just say life cycle right just remove the state and in the return statement i will just create a division tag with the class name app and just specify h1 heading tag with react dome right now here i will just first create component will mount method so i will just say here component will mount right i will just specify parenthesis and the body of this method this method uses camel case notation the first character of the word should be lowercase and the after should be uppercase whenever react render a component it's going to call component will mount first 
This method is only called one time, which is before the initial render method. Since this method is called before render, our component will not have access to the native DOM. We also will not have access to the children's because they are not created yet. The component will mount method is a chance for us to handle configuration, update our state and in general prepare for the first render. Just after that, we have another method which is component date mount, right? Specify parenthesis and the body of this method. Now, whenever this method is called, React has already rendered our component and put it into a DOM. Therefore, if there is any initialization you want to perform that rely on the DOM, do it here. This method is called once all our children elements and our component instance are mounted into the native UI. Now, let's add some statements in these two methods. So, in the component will mount method, I will just say console.log and print a message executed before the component is mounted right and here I will say executed after the component is mounted just after that here I will say console.log and call the react dome object and just find dome node and just specify this here I will just copy the statement and paste it here just wanted to execute this application so I will just save the changes and just say control backtick to start your development server I will just say npm start and press enter I wanted to change the component in the react dome first so I just wanted to import my file here first import life cycle from component life cycle and just remove this box and say life cycle save the changes you will get your react DOM, right right click here and say inspect on the console so when you execute this you will get the console message executed before the component is mounted and the real DOM will return now because you will not have access to the DOM because it is not mounted yet on the other hand you will get console message executed after the component is mounted and you will get react DOM element on the console in the component did mount method you can access the react DOM you can use component did mount method to fetch data from the server with ajax call also if you need to initialize anything that relies on the DOM, you can do this component did mount method. Right? That's it. In the next lecture, we will understand update events. That is all for now. We will see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we will understand update events of component lifecycle. So, we are going to understand component will receive properties and should component update method. So in my application, I'm just using timer component to demonstrate these two methods. In this component, we have a state property and a button which increase the value of state when we click on it. I will leave this component as it is and just create another component just underneath here. So I will just create a component here. So I will just say CC. So this is a snippet for creating a new component and just say enter and just name this component logger right i don't want to export this component so i will just remove the statement and just remove this state now i just wanted to use this component in my timer component right so in this logger component i will just create my first method which is component will receive properties and just specify parenthesis and the body of this function this method takes an argument which is new property right and just after that here i will say 
console.log and just say component will receive properties right is trigger save the changes so this method will execute whenever a component receive a new set of properties this method will be called first also please note that react call this method even when the properties have not changed react doesn't call this method in a mount process instead it only calls this method if some of the components property may update right so if i just save the changes just create a division tag here save the changes and just call this logger component here so i will just create its six heading tag and just call this logger component here so i just wanted to specify a console message to the constructor of the timer component so here i will say console.log timer constructor call save the changes and you will get your constructor message but where is this method where is this message this method is not triggering because this method is only execute when a component properties is updated or changed let me show you how it's work so i just wanted to remove this division tag from here and just return a new property so i will just say here this dot property dot time right so i just wanted to create this property and return it and just wanted to get this property here i just wanted to initialize this property in the logger component so i will just say time is equal to i just wanted to initialize this property with this counter property right so i will just say this dot state dot counter so i just wanted to initialize this timer property with this state counter property now when i click on this button component will receive property method will execute let me show you when i click on this button right so you will get component will receive properties is triggered because when we click on this button component will update its property right let me show you the property on the console so i will just say console.log and say new property and just specify a property name new property right save the changes and when i click on it this is your timer property right when you click it again method you will get updated property every time so this function is triggered when the property of the component is updated now let's understand another which is should component update right and this method is also take two parameters the first is going to be new properties and the second is new state right and here i will say console.log and just call and just say here should component update is triggered save the changes by default this method is not implemented so every update of state or property causes a render even if the property didn't change however if you wanted to avoid possible unnecessary renders you could handle this here returning false means the react will not execute component will update method render method and component did update method if the update of properties or state really affect the output of the component to do so you could do a comparison of current property or state to the next property or state if the component shouldn't update just return false and the component won't update right let me show you how so i just wanted to return true here and when i click on it 
you will get should component update is triggered right now i just wanted to show you the component parameters so i will say console.log and say here new properties and just concatenate with the new properties copy this and paste it here new state and say here new state save the changes and just click on this button right so you will get a new property and a null value the null value is because of we did not specify any state to this component that is why we get null here if you define any state to this component then you will get the state value right so here is your property right now if i just return false here then let's see what's happened save the changes and just click on it did you notice this component is not updating right when i click on it only this component is updating and this is not updating that is because of we return false to the should component update method this method affect on the output so if this method return true this method will execute component will update method your render method and component did update method right so if you return false then these three methods will not execute if you wanted to stop re-rendering your ui then you can return false otherwise return true right that's it that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture hey everyone welcome to react course in this lecture we are going to learn remaining two methods which we had left in the previous lecture these two events are component will update and component did update as well as we are going to understand unmount event also here we have a timer component in this component i will just create two methods so i will first create component will update method so here i will just create component will update method specify parenthesis and the body of this component and here i will say console.log and say call before the render method right this method return true this method is only used to do the preparation for the upcoming render similar to the component will mount or constructor there can be some use case when there needs some calculation or preparation before rendering some items this is the place to do so so this method has two arguments which is new props so i will just say here new props and new state so this property takes new properties and new state so if we just execute this I already started my development server so here you will see a message timer constructor is called and if i just click on this click me button then this method will execute right call before the render method right and if i just print the parameters here so i will just say console.log new props comma here and say new props copy the statement paste it here and just say new state and just change this variable to new state and when i click on this button you will get your new properties and the state right we did not specify any property that is why this will return nothing that is why this object is blank but we have a state counter which has one value and a message click so you will get the new value right so when you click on it you will get two the updated state value so this method will execute before the render method right so if you wanted to access anything or if you wanted to perform any operation then you can do that in this method right just after that we have component did update method so in this method i will just say console.log 
and just use this message right here and just say here call after the render method save the changes and execute it when i click on it you will get call after the render right so when your component is rendered on the ui you will get this message so this method will execute after your component is rendered right this method is executed when the new update component has been updated in the dom when component did update is called two arguments are passed previous properties and previous state this is the inverse of component will update the pass value are what the values were and this dot properties and this dot state are the current value right so i will just specify two arguments so i will just say here pre props and pre state i just want to print these values so i will just say console.log and say here pre props and just print this parameter so i will just say pre props copy the statement paste it here and say here state and pre state save the changes and execute it when i click on this button you will get previous property value right so here you will get zero it did not specify any property so you will get blank object here but if you specify anything then you will get the previous value so here the counter value is zero because the previous value of the counter state is zero when i click on it again you will get one now the current value is two but using this method you can get the previous value right so here we have one so this method is execute after the render method just after that here we have another method which is component will unmount and here i will just say console.log component will unmount right let me give you a short introduction of this method this method is called after the component is unmounted from the dom we are unmounting our component in main.js for example we would want to unregister any global or system or library events or third party ui library elements etc we will understand how this method work in the future lectures but just for now keep in mind component will update method is called before the render method and component did update method will call just after the render method we will understand this method in the future lectures that's it i hope you understand component life cycle events that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture in this lesson we are going to understand react dom events so far you have been learned to render ui with no interaction in other words you are just displaying data now we are going to create a component that are smart enough to respond to the user action so in this session you are going to understand how to implement event in react react events respond to the user actions by defining event handler for those actions take the event handler as just a function definition right you can do this by defining the event handler as the value of the element attribute attributes that are event names you use standard w3c dom event names in camel case such as on click or on mouse over so I will just first create a component in my application. So I will just right click on my component directory and say new file. And I just specify the file name. So I will just say here button and specify extension JSX, right? So this will create a component. And now here I just wanted to import react module. So I will just say I am RC. So this will import the react module as well as the component class. Just after that, I will just create a component class here. So I will just say CC and just select this snippet of creating a component class. So I will just enter here and specify component name. So I will just say button here. I'm not using state. So I will just remove this state statement, right? And in the render method, 
I will just return a division tag with the class name app right there are different ways to create handler function you can create event handler like this or like this so here we'll just create on click event with handler function right or you can just specify on click event with the handler function which is an arrow function now i just want to show you how you can create on click event on the button so here i will just create a simple jsx button here so i will just say button and i want to specify a class here so i will just say class name and specify a bootstrap classes so i will just say btn btn warning and just specify some text to this button so i will just say here save save the changes and just specify this component in the index.js file to the render method right so here i will just say button and just import this module so i will just say import button from specify current directory the component folder and the file save the changes and execute it I already started my development server so this is what you will get right i just want to create click event on this button so i will just specify on click attribute to this button so i will just say on click this is an event equal to and specify your handler function here to call the handler function you just need to wrap them in the curly braces and just specify a function here so i'm just going to create an arrow function here so i will just specify parenthesis arrow and body of that function and here I will just say console.log and wanted to print some message and here I will just say clicked save the changes and when I click on this button you will get this clicked message right so this click event is firing right now you know that we successfully created click event but how do you know which event is firing right now to know that you just need to specify event parameter to the function so here i will just specify event parameter now i just wanted to print this event on the console when i click on it you will get this event object right now i just wanted to find out which event we are triggering so i just wanted to call the property of event object so i will just say event type so this will return event name i just want to save the changes and click on this button so you will get click right so we are executing click event right now now what if you wanted to get the targeted element to get the target element get rid of this arrow function and i will just create a function here before i create a function here we just need to wrap that function in the parenthesis so we can call the bind method so i will just bind this function in the parenthesis and say function and here i will just say console.log and just specify this here right so this is refers to the current object just after that i just need to call bind method of this handler function so what i will do is i will just specify dot here just after this closing parenthesis and just call bind method and in the parameter i will just specify this right so this is refers to the current object save the changes and when i execute this and click on this save button you will get the button element right now there is another way to get the current jsx element so i will just get rid of this statement and say here console.log and i will just specify parameter to this function so i will just say event and just call the event here and call the property target right save the changes and just remove this bind method and when i click on this button you will get your targeted jsx element right you can make this easier by making a class method for event handler like this so i will just create a method here for the class so i will just say here handler specify event parameter 
and the body of this method. Now in this method, I will just say console.log and just say this and event dot target right so i just wanted to print the component and the targeted element just after that i will just get rid of this handler function and here you just need to specify this method right so i will just say here this dot handler right because we are using this statement here i just need to specify bind method here so i will just say bind this right bind method is needed so that in event handler function you get the reference to the instance of a class right if you don't specify bind then this will be null save the changes and execute it when i click on this button you will get your targeted jsx element and the button object right moreover you can bind the event handler to the constructor class also functionally there is no difference but if you are using the same method more than once in render, then you can reduce the duplication by using the constructor binding. Let me show you how. So I will just create a constructor here. So I will just say constructor, specify property parameter and the body of this function. Just call this super method with properties. Just after that. And here I will just create a component property. So I will just say this dot handler me. And just specify this dot this method handler method right and just specify handler method here so i will just say handler here right and just after that i just wanted to bind this here because we use this keyword in the handler method right so this is refers to the current component bind method is needed so that in event handler function you get a reference to the instance of a class if you don't specify bind method, then this keyword will be null, right? Just after that, I will just get rid of this handler function. And here you just need to call this component property. So I will just say here, this dot handler me, right? Save the changes and execute it. When you click on this button, you will get the JSX element object. And this is your targeted JSX element right in the next lesson we will understand on mouse over event that's it we will see you in the next lesson in this lecture we will understand how to create mouse over event in react in the previous lecture we had learned how to create click event on the button now we will understand how to create mouse over event on the jsx element you can see here i just updated my editor and just changed font to make example more attractive as you can see here i have a button component created in the previous lecture now i will just create mouse over event in this component now let's create mouse over event on the paragraph so here is the simple component now this is my render method of this component and the return keyword now just create a division tag so i will just say parenthesis and just create here a division tag so i'll just say div and specify class name app you can do the same thing with simple snippet also so i will just get rid of this statement and say here div dot app and press tab right so this will create a simple division tag with the class name app now in this division tag, I will just create another division tag. So I will just say div child and press tab, right? So this will create a division tag class name child. And here I will just say paragraph and call the on mouse over event. So I will just say on mouse over. Keep in mind all the events are camo case, right? Just after that, specify the handler function. So I will just say equal to sign and in the curly braces i will just call a function so here i will just call the arrow function so i will just say parenthesis arrow and the function body and here i will say console.log and say child event fire just after that just specify text to this paragraph so i will just say hover me save the changes and just execute it so here you can see 
So when we hover the cursor over this hover mid text, you will get a message, right? Now, now you know that how you can create mouse over event. Now let's explore this event. Now if I just specify a parameter event, now just wanted to understand which component is firing the mouse over event, then I will just say here E dot target, right? Save the changes and when you execute this and when you mouse over this whole text, you will get the paragraph, right? Because the mouse over event is firing on the paragraph, right? So you will get your paragraph on the console. Now, if I just say here E dot type, you will get the type of event on the console. Save the changes and when you hover on this hover text, you will get mouse over event, right? So using this event, you can create different type of animation or you can just enable and disable the button on the mouse over event, right? That's it. In the next lecture, we will understand what is capture and bubble phase of event. So we will see you in the next lesson. Hey, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learn a lot, but there is still something missing in this course. If you want to learn more about React, then I have a course called Complete React Guide. This video you have been watching is the third hour of that course. If you want to learn more, click on the link in the video description and enroll in the course. And if you are my subscriber, then this is good news for you. If you enroll in this course by the description link, you will get almost $13 discount. Isn't it beneficial? So what you have to lose really? Enroll now and I will see you in the course.